A crime is committed, you report it, the justice system is supposed to handle it. But what if the America you know involves a lot more red tape? So much red tape that sometimes crimes never get prosecuted and missing women are never found. Matt Pearl explains. I spoke to her that day and there and I just the things that I recall just hearing her voice and her telling me she loves me and that she'll call me later. You know. Later never came for Chantel Haynes and her sister, Deanna Black Crow. The next day, their mother, Deborah Black Crow, was found dead. She was pregnant at the time, murdered by her husband, Patrick McNeil. It was very important for people to know like how important she was and that she existed and that her life, it mattered. That statement, that their mother's life mattered, like she smiles, he smiles, he smiles, he smiles. Is one Black Crow and Haynes feel they must continue to express to whomever they can on behalf of their mom and their community. You're dealing with domestic violence, but indigenous women, it's, you know, it's like unnoticed. The acronym is MMIW. It stands for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. It exists because of the belief within the community that indigenous women who face domestic violence don't receive the proper attention. Just not a, um, a streamlined way to communicate. Natalie Weeks is a Native American educator and advocate. She says the biggest issue is poor data sharing between tribes and the federal government, but it goes further. Native uh, indigenous peoples, especially women, are murdered at a rate 10 times higher nationally than any other racial ethnic group, despite being less than 2% of the United States population. According to the Centers for Disease Control, murder is the third leading cause of death for indigenous women. Another report shows more than four out of five indigenous women have experienced violence. In 2021, the federal government created a missing and murder unit focused on solving these kinds of cases. But a unit and a database can't account for history. You coming from outside into a tribal community, whether it's uh, rural or urban, um, there's a lot of mistrust of authority, you know, just because of the historical um, broken treaties and other things that, you know, happen when you have this vulnerable, disenfranchised community. That's why seeking help from the federal government, traditional women's shelters, even local police, isn't as easy as it seems. Black Crow and Haynes continue to speak out. They hold events across Nevada to raise awareness. They formed an organization to protect indigenous women against domestic violence. It's called Her 38 Roses, one rose for each year of their mother's life. My mom's still with me even now. And a lot of the reason why I do a lot of the things that I do because she's constantly there, like that, that drive, that push to do, you know. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> They call for sisters to help sisters. They say as loud as they can that their mother right and all like her That's matter. Cool. She's a beautiful person, like beautiful laugh, smile, everything, just beautiful. And then all of that just like going away, like all her shine, all her light. In Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm Matt Pearl.